Dear friends, thank you so much for watching the program Messengers of Hope and for joining us again for this seminar prepared by the canvassing and missionary departments of the General Conference. Many times I meditate on what it will be like for us to be in our heavenly home, sharing the experiences of our own salvation and the experiences of the salvation of others who have come to God through our efforts. Have you ever felt homesick for heaven? Well, today we have the privilege to listen to this beautiful song prepared by the Before the Throne Quartet entitled Homesick for Heaven. Enjoy. So dear to my heart is the promise of God, a home with the pure and blessed, where earth's weary pilgrims, strangers here below, will find their eternal rest. I'm homesick. Thank you, Andrew, Jared, Peter, and William. It was so beautiful to listen to this wonderful song. And I hope the Lord will continue to bless you in your efforts to His honor and glory. And now, I would like to invite each and every one of us to bow our souls in prayer together with Pastor Livio Todoroyu. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so very much for giving us a chance to uh, ask you for help and assistance now in the beginning of this wonderful seminar that uh, combines missionary and canvassing activities. In the name of Jesus, we ask you that you may bless Brother Linares in his seminar and all those that are uh, part of his teamwork uh, that uh, prepared this seminar. In the name of Jesus, we ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit and we pray, Heavenly Father, that this seminar may have a proper impact upon the people that are listening and uh, that uh, will receive an exposure to this truth. In the name of Jesus, we thank you so very much. Amen. Today's program is a presentation of the missionary and canvassing plans the General Conference has for us for the next few years. Pastor Mario Linares, the director of these two departments, will be interviewed 
by Pastor Andre Devay regarding the missionary and canvassing plans they have for the next few years for the worldwide church. I hope that we will be attentive to listen to these wonderful plans they have for us. My dear friends, brothers, and dear sisters, it is a pleasure to be with you to talk about something very, very important for our work. I am here with dear brother Mario Linares, General Conference Director of Evangelism and Canvassing. We have the pleasure to talk a little bit about his work plan. Brother Mario, how are you doing? It is a pleasure to greet you, Brother André. It is a pleasure to be together on this occasion to speak about a very special subject, which is evangelism and canvassing. It is a pleasure to be by your side, our dear brother and friend, Brother André, who is also General Conference Director of Welfare and Stewardship Department of the General Conference. Thank you, brother. Bro brethren, our objective at this time is to talk a bit, a little bit about the plans and the programs of both departments, evangelism and canvassing. This is because many times the question is asked, what is the General Conference Departmental going to do? What are its plans? It is to answer this question that we are here together and we are going to talk about both plans, evangelism and canvassing. My dear brother Mario, when you prepare your plan for the missionary department, what were the bases for the creation of this department? of this evangelistic plan for the General Conference. Thank you, Brother André. Without a doubt, we have referred to the method of Christ. Here, he is our example, he is our master, and he is our teacher. And in Matthew 4.23, it tells us, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, in preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So, in that way, we have highlighted three dimensions that Jesus addressed in his ministry here on earth. So, he taught, he preached, and he healed. And these three areas, the Lord always used. Now, Generally, he was attentive to the needs of the human being. He was attentive to the sufferings of the human beings. This is why the Spirit of Prophecy tells us that, that in the most cases, he healed more than he preached. That preached. Perfect. Dear brother, if we are to follow the methods of Christ, how will this work or the methods of Christ are to be reflected in the church? And also, how can the churches do the same work or prepare themselves to do the work of Jesus? Yes, it is true. Uh, Jesus says that he went from house to house, from neighborhood to neighborhood, from village to village, and from town to town, preaching the gospel. So, in the same way, the book Evangelism, page uh, 457, it says the following, In every city that is entered, a solid foundation is to be laid for permanent work. The Lord's method are to be followed by doing house-to-house -house work, by giving Bible readings in the families. And this work, it seems simple, it's very well known, but it's the work that we need to continue to do with more dedication. Yes, people are very eager to listen, but sometimes they are at home. We need to get there. 
Now, how can the church prepare itself, brother, to do this visitation work? Yes, logically it is necessary to make the church aware and we want to we want to use some quotes from the spirit of prophecy found in the book uh, Christian Service, uh, page 72, when it tells us, in every city should be a corpse of organized, well-disciplined workers, not merely one or two, but scores should be set to work. It tells us to uh, there has to be well-organized groups. It's not referring to the Bible workers or workers that are uh, linked to the church. Exactly, it's re referring to, to common and the lay members. And it tells us, it says, in our churches, let companies be formed for service. Let ones unite in labor as fishers of men. And it continues to tell us in the book, in the next book, that every church members are to do evangelistic work in the homes of their neighbors. Uh, look, brother Andre. We can be excellent preachers. But if we do not reach people's homes, we will always be incomplete. Isn't that right? So for that reason, for our work to be complete, we have to go into people's homes and talk face-to-face. Uh, -face. Yes, face-to-face. -face. Yes, the work cannot be just theoretical, but practical. Where the people are. Every church must be a practical school of Christian workers. We cannot think of a church where we go simply for recreation or to witness a show. But we need to understand that from a practical point of view, in fact, our church must be a practical school where we receive teachings, to be able to go out and preach the gospel to the people. So its members should learn how to give Bible studies. All of us should be trained, taught, instructed to know how to use the best strategies to teach a Bible course. So when I meet a person who is interested in knowing I cannot just say, wait a minute, I am going to call my pastor and have him explain it to you. I cannot do it. I have, I have to know how to defend my faith, how to speak according to the people's needs. And how to conquer the person in such a way, the love and care. Because not always uh, we will have the contact. We must all inculcate the differences that exist in our beliefs. We must win their sympathy in order to have the opportunity to initiate a, a Bible course or study in their home. This is a very interesting point. When we talk to someone who believes different from us, in the first contact we are going to talk about something that we have in common. A first contact, we will talk about something that is interest of us in order to gain sympathy. Exactly. exactly. Another interesting point, which is becoming more and more necessary in the world, we must learn to help the poor and care for the sick. How good. Oh, I like this. How good is it to have this in your project? Exactly. Jesus did this. He cured the person's illness first. And later on, now the person was willing to listen to his message. We must work for those who are unconverted. And this is what we really need to learn. Another aspect that we should learn is to realize uh, health schools, our, our churches, 
our properties should be used to give health lectures, uh, cooking classes, and for many branches in the ministry and charity of Christian charity, there shouldn't uh, be only theoretical knowledge, but also practical work under the direction of experienced instructors. Let it tells us, it continues telling us. So everything that we're presenting here is uh, quotes from the Spirit of Prophecy. In, in the next book, we see, let the teachers open the way, lead the way, in working among the people and others uniting with them will learn from their example. One example is worth more than many precepts. Very interesting. This. Very interesting. It means that I, pastor or I, worker, I can stay in my house just making plans and sending them out for the lay members to execute. I have to be with them. I have to work together with them. Using my example, to motivate them to do the missionary work. Exactly. Exactly. Another very important detail uh, that we must also follow, the instruction that uh, the servant of the Lord gives us, is that many times us as Bible workers, we want to do the work ourselves, isn't it? And our work mainly is to teach the people how to work. Isn't it? If I'm the only one working and the whole church is not doing almost anything, then I'm at fault. In the opposite case also, if the whole church is working and I am not, it is not right. Very well. Dear brother, this work of doing health courses, culinary arts, uh, visitations, missions, missions, Everything we do has the objective of making people know about the church. And therefore, many people come and have the desire to know our message. But we have seen that many times the problem is in the follow-up. The person comes to church, to us, but sometimes we don't support them in the continuity to teach them about the doctrine to teach them about the church. What is the, de the departmental plan for this situation? Yes, that is a very important point because the welfare outreach, the cooking classes, the health schools, and, and all the different activities that our church carries out, they're very important, but they must be in, uh, complete. And what do I mean by this? Everything must lead to these people with whom we were able to have the contact to the study of the Word of God. If we do not lead people to the study of the Word of the Lord, then our work is incomplete and unfinished. Then we must invite people to study the Word of God so that they can take the Bible course and in that way, the truth can remain in their mind. The first step has already been taken through outreach, uh, cooking classes, health lectures, and isn't it? And, and different activities that can be done through the church. Uh, it's the first step, but the second step is the study of the Word of God. In that way, the truth is consolidated in their minds and the hearts of the people. They have already seen how important our work is, uh, helping in their various needs, ministering to their needs, and their health problems as well. So they recognize that we do indeed have an important knowledge for them. And when we present to them the sacred truth of the Word of God, they will also understand in the same way that our message will be just as valuable as our health message or health care or the attention given to their needs. Interesting. It means that after doing the great work of a mission or campaign, it is now necessary to go to the homes 
and work with the people. Now it is necessary that we do it, this work personally. We talk about Bible courses and studies. Bible courses in general is what we do with the person with whom we have a first contact. But after they know a little more, we go to the Bible study. And how are we going to, to work this out? So listen, uh, the book Evangelism uh, tells us in page 456, the plan of holding Bible readings was a heaven-born idea. In other words, the plan of questions and answers in order to understand a biblical message, a doctrine, or even a prophecy, is a heaven-born idea. And it continues to orient as the spirit of prophecy that we need to preach less and educate more by holding Bible readings and praying with the families and little companies. How can I dream with a, with a group if I haven't started with one? In order to have a small group where we can study with one or two or three families, we need to at least to start to study with one. That's where they begin to study the Bible course, they receive the first lessons, they conclude the, the Bible course, and that way uh, they are, we're enriching the person's knowledge with the message of the Word of God. It continues to tell us tell us to avoid lengthy sermons. The people cannot retain one half of the discourses which they hear. That is why the, the Bible studies it's even more effective in order to learn the Word of God. Yes, perfect. Now, it is necessary. Uh, my brother, speak to me. Do we, we have an idea of how many studies a member could or would like to do over a period of time? Is there an an idea for training? How will this be? Yes, uh, very well remembered. Uh, some years ago, there was there was a good tradition to give Bible courses and gather the people who had finished it and then invite them to church. Uh, we would take them to the front of the church and we would light them up in the front and in a ceremony, they would be given a certificate of uh, or diploma of completion. But that has been a long time since uh, we have been doing this. So our proposal or our plan uh, this coming year is to begin with this goal of being able to give Bible courses and to be able to hold these meetings in the church. And how are we going to do this? Uh, take a look. If each member, if each member is able to conclude with one person the Bible course, there are some that start and they do not finish. But yes, if each member finishes one Bible course in three months, it's enough to finish the Bible course. Then, quarterly, we can have those meetings in the church with five or 20 uh, people and they would be receiving their certificate or their diploma, isn't it? That will be something wonderful to have in our church. For example, in Brazil, we have 10,000 members. And in South America, we have around seven or 8,000 members without counting Brazil. And let us imagine if every member in three months finishes a Bible course with a family member, a friend, or a neighbor, only here in South America, we will almost have 20,000 Bible courses in one quarter. Yes, since there are four quarters in a year, we, you can see we can have 80... 
80 mil cursos bíblicos. 80,000 Bible courses per year. Contando de que no es solamente la conclusión de un curso. And considering that it's not only the conclusion of a Bible course, but those people went to our church, received the Bible course, received the diploma certificates, they attended our meetings. And logically, they had the opportunity to have a close contact with the church. And with the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, how many of those people will be able to stay in the church? If we will make the calculation considering only 1%, we will have more than 400 people. Exactly. And in one year. That's impressive. Those that are going to come, what it does, what it generates, the apostasies will come down because they will be more involved in doing the work of the Lord. There are two benefits here. As the Apostle Paul says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So take a look. As me, as a member of the church, I'm engaged in working through Bible studies or Bible courses. I am involved and worried about the salvation of my neighbor, whether it be a fellow man, a relative, a friend, a family member. And just as this has great importance, it is also that while you work for them, I'm also working my own salvation. And this is marvelous. Yes, it is marvelous. In addition to this, when we are working for our neighbor, working in missionary work, or social work, or the work of the canvasser, we, we do not do it alone. Who work with us? This text has uh, left me amazed because it says that thousands and thousands of angels, millions and millions of angels, they're waiting for an opportunity to work with the members of our church. So pretty much they're anxious, they're desiring to help us in our work because to them it is not allowed to direct uh, the work in a direct manner. But they are waiting, they're waiting for the young person, for the child to be interested in to do the work. And when they realize the work, they go quickly to help them, helping them to remember some text, uh, many times touching the heart of the person or with the person that we're going to have a study. They do such an amazing and amazing job that many times we're impressed, as in the case of a lady who received a visit from a canvasser and said to her, and she said, come in, I was waiting for you. And the canvasser made the introduction and after he finishes, the lady says, I know you have something else for me. And she said, yeah. And he said, yes. The canvasser said, and he said, yes, I have a special message from God and began to conduct a Bible study with a woman. And the canvasser was intrigued. Uh, how did she know? And the lady said, you know, that last night I couldn't sleep uh, because I had a dream that the Lord was pointing me a person who came to speak to me about the truth. And in my dream, I saw you. I saw you even before you came here. I have seen you. So, so I was, she was waiting for the whole night, waiting for the, for the day to come to see when you were coming. And thank God that you're here and you have presented this message. So the angels are willing to do this work to help us in this mission to take the gospel to the world. In other words, my brother, if you want to have the company of angels, work for God, do missionary work. Now, Brother Mario, I am very much struck by the fact that in your project, 
There is also special attention to the work of the sisters, the work that women can do. Tell us about this. Yes, uh, the sisters, uh, women, they have uh, incredible facility or to be welcomed in any house. With men, there's a lot of prejudice if the husband is not at home or there is a child, one cannot approach the house. But the sisters, they have a facility to be very well received and when they talk uh, one with another, they can speak to each other heart to heart. In other words, in, uh, speaking in their own way, so they can be very well understood. And in that way, if they present the gospel of salvation, if they present the Bible studies or the Bible courses, then women themselves, with their daughters and their families, they can be received easily. I honestly believe that today, nowadays, the work for women is much broader and easier than for men. It is interesting. I see when I sometimes go out with my wife to visit or do something. We arrive at the, at the house and I, even though I had been there many times, I stay in the main part of the house and the woman goes to the bedroom, to the kitchen, the living room, whatever, because she has much a greater facility to do so. Sisters, there is a special space or place for you in the work plan of evangelism. Now, brother, not only the women, the churches, but I also see that there is a strong plan to involve the youth. What is the plan for the youth in the work of doing missionary work? Yes, the word of the Lord tells us that the glory of the youth, of the young man, is in their strength. So we need to take advantage of our beloved youth's strength in order to realize this amazing work of bringing the word of the Lord to the world. The young people are willing to realize this work, but they also need to receive the guidance with the most experienced brethren. We need to direct the young people so that they give part of their strength or all of their strength to the work of the Lord. Uh, take a look. If our young people, young ladies, young men, would just give one year of their lives to the Lord's service, wouldn't that be ex uh, extraordinary? It would be marvelous. We are told in the text from the messages uh, to young people in page uh, 220, the idea of holding Bible readings is a heaven-born idea and opens the way to put hundreds of young men and women into the field. It tells us hundreds of young men. Imagine that in if every country we would have a hundred young people working de, uh, with determination in favor for the preaching of the gospel, the spirit of prophecy tells us that Jesus would have come a long time ago and the work would have been completed. Yeah, this is very interesting. I would like to speak to the pastors, to the workers. The young people, they want to work, but sometimes they don't know how. It is your privilege to show them and teach them the honor of working for God. That when a young person accepts to work for God, you will have a wonderful companion, strong, courageous, with many plans many ideas, much vivacity, and who does a great job. Brother Andre, look, where there are young people, there is joy. A church that has young people has future. We want to highlight this period of pandemic where most of the young people were involved 
in the transmission of the online messages. We saw how quickly the young people got involved in this work and in that way, in all countries, uh, messages came out that catered to our members and also to all those who were invited to participate. But in large, at a, at a big part, we would like to thank the young people because they are the ones who handle all the technology better. So we see that if we involve our young people in this work, they will be able to do an extraordinary work with a lot of dedication. Perfect. Now, Brother Mario, I would like for you to talk a little bit about the canvassing work. We are going to talk later about canvassing as a work. Here we are going to talk about canvassing as an instrument of evangelism for the evangelism. What are the plans for this? So take a look. Uh, the canvassing work is a school, just as myself or you, Brother Andre, and other brethren. Canvassing work has influenced and shaped the religious life of many young people, and why not say it had also prepared us to face secular life. So if our young people could understand that if they concluded their high school and before starting a university, if they would put aside at least one year in order to serve the Lord, they would be better fitted to withstand the evil influences that they might receive and face at a university, right? We need graduated uh, professional young people, we need uh, young people that study, that prepare themselves, but we need that these young people can be professionals, but at the same time they may continue to be Christians, that they may give uh, testify of their faith wherever they go, and for that, their first need, they need to have a personal experience with the Lord. Many people who have, uh, young people who have finished their high school have had a religious experience still very dependent of their parents. And they haven't had the opportunity to have a personal experience. So when they leave their cities, many go to other cities and why not even other countries to realize missionary work or canvassing work, at least for a year. And when they return to their homes and their cities, they would be better fitted and best equipped to continue their professional graduation or formation and continue to be true Christians. Yes. Impressive. So, there we exactly. can have a real army, right? Exactly. The Spirit of Prophecy tells us that with such an army of youth, army of workers, rightly trained, might furnish how soon the message of a crucified, risen, and soon coming Savior might be carried to the world. And we need to build such an army, Brother André, because the youth are willing to get ready. But as we as leaders and as generals need to carry out these plans, these seminars, and begin with faith and determination, for, because this is the will of the Lord, and the Lord will grant us great blessings and wonderful results. Very well. So, there is work for the youth, for the women, for the brethren in general, many activities. And, and children too. The, the children can do it. There is a lot that can be done. Brother, could you give me a little summary about the work? Yes, we have talked about the welfare missions, we have spoken about the health lectures, uh, cooking classes. We have also talked about we have talked about canvassing and especially about the Bible. Yes, the Bible courses. Everything must lead 
lead us to the study of the Word of God. If we do not take that step of studying the Word of God with our fellow men, our neighbors, the work is not completed. So therefore, we must lead all people that we come in contact with to study the Word of God. It says, young man, your help is called for. Make a covenant with God by sacrifice. Take hold of His work. He is your sufficiency. Be strong, yea, be strong. That's what the Spirit of Prophecy tells us. Wonderful. It's a special call. It is a special call. Brother, if the church works with this vision, with the missionary spirit, doing its best, following the plans presented here, what is the final result expected from all this? Yes, many times we expect to carry out an extraordinary work, uh, sensational plans, but in reality, the Word of the Lord and the Spirit of Prophecy teaches us that we must work with love, with sincerity and trust and confidence in the Lord and following the steps and the example left by our Savior. And if we humbly carry out these plans, though simple, though simple as they are, but if we do it with all dedication, uh, it is going to be fulfilled what uh, the, the Lord's servant saw in vision. The spirit, of, the spirit of prophecy tells us, in visions of the night, representation passed before me of a great reformatory movement among God's people. Many praising God, the sick were healed, and other miracles were wrought. And they would see hundreds and thousands visiting families and opening before them the Word of God. So, Brother André, this already had a beginning. It had a very good beginning. But there was only a beginning. It needs to continue and to continue with more power. This is the time when we must do this work with greater power. And the statement continues that thousands and hundreds were seen visiting the families, opening before them the Word of God, and the hearts were converted by the power of the Holy Spirit, and a spirit of genuine conversion was manifest. On every side, doors were thrown open to the proclamation of the truth. The world seemed to be lightened with a heavenly influence. Great blessings were received by the true and the humble people of God. Christian Service, page 42, paragraph 4. This is what needs to happen in these days. Hundreds and thousands of people being visited by each one of us and studying the Word of God with them. The doors will not be will not be closed. The pandemic will not be able to close the doors of those families. Here it is written, it is prophesied. On every side, doors were thrown open. They were thrown wide open for the proclamation of the truth. We cannot remain fearful. But in the name of the Lord, we need to go forward, trusting in the promises of God and He will open the doors and the hearts of the people so we can study the Word of God. Amen. What a wonderful thing. We have hope that in addition to the effort of those who work for God, we will have the special endowment of the Holy Spirit. Now, Brother Mario, there is a novelty, a new special te technology that the missionary department is bringing as a gift to us, especially in this time of pandemic or difficulty. Tell us about this. Please, brother. Right, brother, in the month of June, we had a meeting with brother Eduardo Merlo from Bolivia. 
and he presented to us a special plan for an online Bible course uh, to be used through our cell phones. And by God's grace, it was presented to our brethren in Central America, South America, and also here in Brazil and other countries. The brethren have seen that this method of giving Bible courses through the cell phone is a method that we are uh, urgently needing today. And by the grace of God, many countries and many unions and conferences also here in Brazil. We have also received uh, this application or app in our cell phones. We're in an uh, adaptation phase so that next uh, year we may begin to work in a more direct way with our cell phone through this, through this app. In Spanish, it is called Curso Bíblico Lumbrero Plus. In Brazil, it is called Curso Bíblico Conectados. And each conference or field has its customized app. In Brazil, for example, there are 16 conferences or fields, and each conference has its own customized app. In Central America, each union, each field is getting their own customized application. And here in South America, several countries, such as Argentina, Chile, Colombia, and other countries, are getting their own application. So, if in your country, you still don't have that app, you can contact us and we can direct you with Brother Eduardo Merlo, who is preparing these applications and apps and is helping us a lot in this aspect. And if you already have it, let us get busy doing Bible courses especially with the cell phone, the cell phone apps. We believe that each person has the opportunity to give at least one Bible course every three months. In that way, we can give Bible studies. And logically, uh, virtually, it takes us to a direct uh, contact. And this uh, Bible course we b is a means that the Lord has prepared so we can work. When you have a little bit of restriction as it has been uh, in the pandemic. Perfect. So, this is the good news about this virtual Bible course work that we can do. Now, in the next section, we will see in a practical way the project for the canvassing department. It is clear that the project does, doesn't mean that the director of the canvassing work are going to do this work alone. This is only an orientation of what the canvassing department expects to be done. But the canvassing director in your country or your region can make his plans, his promo promotions, his work, advertisement, adding that these other ideas to make a great canvassing work. Brother Mario, please, tell us a little more in, in a practical way the work of the canvassing department. Look, the canvassing work, Brother André, has been a great blessing for our church, both in Brazil, South America, Central America, and other countries of the world. The Lord has sent canvassers, and where, wherever they have passed, they have spread the seeds of truth. It has grown and borne fruit. We have churches, groups, fields, and now even unions. Just uh, so we can have an idea, in Brazil, it came through our brother Laverick, who started with with some magazines, then wrote some books. We had Brother Andre Secan, Brother Desiderio Devay, 
and so on, some other young men, uh, Brother Pablo Tuleo, who went to different parts of Brazil, and in that way, they started our groups in our churches. The same way, in South America, Brother Kotzel came to Argentina, and together with Brother Eugenio Laikovsky, they started to do the work. Brother Laikovsky went to Chile, and after Brother Kotzel went, and there he organized a church. And then Brother Laikovsky went to Peru, there he opened the mission, field and organized a church, then canvassers took the message to Bolivia, and then they also took it to Ecuador, Colombia, and Venezuela. And later on, our brother Carmelo Palazzolo, Felipe Garcia, Daniel Dumitru, and other brethren went to Central America, to Honduras, Guatemala, and other brethren went to Mexico, and so on and so forth. The work of the reform movement has always been related to canvassing. And today, by God's grace, we can say with all certainty that this divine plan that the Lord deemed good to leave to His Church will continue to the end. The inspired Word of God tells us that as long as per probation continues, there will be opportunity for the canvassing work. How can we continue to improve the canvassing work for the preaching of the gospel? We have separated uh, here some modalities of canvassing so that we may continue to implement in our churches. For example, uh, the Waldensian canvassing. The Waldensian canvassing is performed at least one Sunday per month, and we recommend uh, that it is feasible every second Sunday of the month be set aside for the Waldensian canvassing. That Sunday, all of those who would like to participate are invited, uh, the children, the youth, the adults, the elders, uh, all the church. And on this occasion, we would go out to sell magazines from house to house at an extremely low price and speaking about health and sharing pamphlets and also offering them the Bible courses. It is a wonderful experience. And in most cases, when our brethren return at noon, they get together for lunch and they all go back home very happy after doing such a wonderful work as it is in the world. That's interesting. Tell us, Brother Mario, what are the benefits to the church of, in doing the Waldensian canvassing? Yes, you see, it brings a lot of benefits. It revives the missionary spirits of the church. It sows the Word of God in the homes visited and strengthens the faith of those who participate, uh, generates new missionary contacts, and discovers souls or students for the Bible courses and reinforces our religious identity. And why not uh, to mention it brings more resources to supply the needs of our church. In other words, there are many benefits. Perfect. Um, brother, what is the best Sunday? The Sunday you recommend to do the work, the Waldensian canvassing. Right, as we had mentioned, the second Sunday is the best day of the month to carry out this work. Because it is a Sunday, it is the second Sunday of the month, when many people still have some resources and they can gladly receive you and they can receive the magazines, and also they can buy them without any problem. So we recommend that it be the second month, uh, second Sunday of the month, though we know that many on that Sunday, right on that only Sunday of the month, a month that has been chosen to do the Waldensian canvassing, uh, other uh, commitments come up, and the enemy always wants to trap them in that way. Or many times, a Sunday arrives, Sunday morning, 6 or 7 in the morning, and we are gazing outside and begging for rain. It happens, happens sometimes. Uh, human nature is inclined that way. 
Many times we feel, many times we feel like the bear, the lazy bear. We want to sleep until later on on Sunday, but all who are committed to have this experience will find in their lives fulfilled. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying the sheaves with them. So I invite you to have this experience. I invite our deal Bible workers, missionaries, uh, missionary work directors and pastors to perform this work in their churches. See, it is a simple experience, but with great results, both for those souls who are going to visit and especially for our church, our children and our youth. We will be giving them an example. It is very important. We have some pictures of some churches that have are participated in doing uh, the Bible course and also the world dancing, canvassing, some youth, children, teen teenagers who participated with great joy and it is inculcated and instilling in them not only the desire but also the hands-on experience to carry out the work of canvassing. Interesting. It is so nice to, to see Brother Mario speaking about the Waldensian canvassing. For it seems that you have, uh, you have learned in a book in regards to this. It seems that it is the experience you had had. I want to tell you, I want to let you know, we can know these things only when we do them. We must make the experience. When we do it, we don't want to stop doing it because it is a wonderful for our life. Now, brother, besides the Waldensian canvassing, there is also a special work for the time of vacation, right? Exactly. There's an experience that we have been doing for several years now which is the uh, vacation canvassing. Uh, the young people are invited, teenagers, uh, young girls, so they can participate in this type of canvassing where they get together for the holidays for two or three weeks in order to experience this. They have a schedules to get up. Uh, they have schedules for morning worship, uh, for prayer. And they go out to canvas. They come back. They have lunch together, have their evening worship. They have time to study the Sabbath school lesson and to study the Bible. And they have time to interact with the rest of the, of the young people from the church. They have their experiences. They tell the ex their experiences and meet with people to whom they testify of what they know. And in that way, uh, many of these young people who participate in the vacation uh, canvassing for the first time in their lives have a unique experience with God. Many of them who have not uh, been members and participated in the vacation uh, uh, canvassing began to think seriously about baptism. And after some Bible studies with a Bible worker or pastor, a couple months later, uh, they're baptized. It is a beautiful experience. It's a very good experience for our young people. And we hope that we might perform this in the months of January or July, which are the vacation months. Uh, here in Brazil, we have had amazing experiences. Many young people have been baptized. Many of them have continued the canvassing work afterwards and have felt the desire to study in the missionary school. There uh, are already young people who, after studying in the missionary school, are Bible workers and working effectively in the missionary field. This is interesting, my brothers and sisters. I have been following the church for many years, and I have not seen a project that makes our young people develop so much love, so much desire to be members of the church and to become missionary and, volu and volunteers as much as the canvassing that is done during the vacation time. 
I have experienced it in my own home. My two children have participated with much, with much pleasure, much joy, and so many other young people. A few days ago, I started, a year ago, to do a Bible course with a teenager from my local church. I invited her to do the principles of faith at my house. She's she said, yes, I will do it. She's very much educated. And she did it. At the beginning of the year, this young lady went on this canvassing during her vacation time. She came back very happy about the whole experience. I asked her, because a time for her baptism was getting close, I told her that we had to continue our Bible study. I asked her, how are you doing? Brother, when you invited me, I wanted to study because you had been uh, considering me and calling me, but during the vacation, this canvassing trip, I made my, de my decision. I have decided that I want to be a member of the church. We finished the work with her, and within 15 or 20 days ago, I had the pleasure of baptizing her. This is the power of this canvassing that is being done during the vacation time. And uh, look, Brother Andre, we as a church, as leaders, have a very big responsibility for our young people. And we need to work with them uh, with dedication on their behalf. And working with them, you as a youth director who has been in the Brazilian Union, you have seen it is very satisfying to work with young people. Yes, I will say again what I said. Young people want to work for God, but sometimes they don't know what they want and we have to help them. We have to help them to understand how good it is to work for God. Now, Brother Mario, is there room in canvassing for those who are workers and pastors? What's the plan? For this? Yes, we have, as we have read in the Spirit of Prophecy, uh, we as leaders, as, as teachers, must set the example for others to follow. Uh, so we also want to propose that the field conferences set aside 10 days of the year, only 10 days, so that the workers, pastors could meet and on those days and carry out a canvassing seminar. It could be to open a new group or where a small group already exists to strengthen it and then dedicate those days for a canvassing seminar in an addition to strengthening the bonds of friendship and Christianity and brotherhood as workers and pastors we will be making a difference by doing an extraordinary work on behalf of many souls in reality is very important uh, the canvassing work along with the Bible workers. It's only 10 days uh, of the year, and in that way, we will be giving a strong testimony to our young people so that they can imitate our example. Or if we can take some of them with us, we could also do a good job. I remember when I was very young, I was 15 or 16 years old. There was a seminar like this one in the conference where I lived and I went to my Bible worker who today is the regional secretary for South America, Brother Romulo. And I said to him, Brother, I would like to go with you. May I? He said, yes, please. And I went and I was happy together with the president of the, the field, the, the canvassing director and all the Bible workers. And I remember that I had to go with you and I was very happy. And I remember that there was a good times in the company. So this is a missionary plan for excellency. You can go out with your work team to do the canvassing work and take young people with you so that you can see them work in the work of God. The impression that will be left in their minds will be unforgettable. 
this will not disappear from their minds. Brother, I like to do uh, campaigns in ve very much, and there are some that are for the canvassing missions. Let's talk about this. Just this year, our brother Andre invited us to participate in a canvassing mission, and we accepted the challenge. We went as far as the Amazons in Brazil. We went to Manaus, and then we undertook a 30-hour trip by boat. Only 30 hours? Yes, and the most interesting thing is that the boat did not have seats. We had to buy our own hammock and then hang it up. I think you can visualize one of the boats. It was uh, three stories high, and we were on the top floor. And there we spread our hammocks. We were there 30 hours with a spectacular panoramic view. Uh, we went and we arrived at the city of Barcelos, almost on the border with Colombia and Venezuela. Uh, around, those, around those places, we stayed there about a month, uh, together with Brother André, his son, his son Andresinho, Brother Fran Charles, president of that uh, region's conference, and also uh, we had Misael, who is very well known in several countries, and, and a group of us, we were very united, we began to carry out this work in the city of Barcelos, Brazil, as we have said earlier. Right, brother, in the middle of the pandemic. Yes, in the middle of the pandemic. In the middle of the pandemic, something happened interesting. We thought that people were not going to receive us because we came from afar. But we noticed one thing, that people were anxious to talk to someone, much more with someone who was from afar. They received us with such affection. Uh, and look, even besides buying our books, they wanted to continue speaking to us. Yes. And by the grace of God, we spent uh, wonderful days. Brother Mario, I arrived at the house of an old lady who said, You know, brother, I understood now why all night I could not sleep. I was in prayer because I am very sick. I was praying. Lord, send me someone to teach me what to do. And this morning, the Lord sent him, sent, sent you to me to teach me how I can treat my illness. You are an angel of God who is who is in my house. I show her. Uh, she bought the book, prayed with her, showed the treatment to her and her daughter. And I left there very happy, knowing that the angel that Brother Mario mentioned was there also doing the work. How wonderful. Another interesting experience. Uh, we met uh, the Secretary of Health of that city, uh, Mrs. Patricia a lady who received us with much affection, with a lot of attention, and we were in her house and met uh, her family. And last week, Brother André, uh, Pastor Friend Charles, who is responsible for this conference, he told me that he received the visit of the Secretary of Health in Manaus at the headquarters of our conference. They have the privilege of being together, a brother Fran Charles, his wife, his family, and they had a dinner with her, and she is very much impressed and has opened the doors so that our canvassers who stayed in Manaus uh, can visit all public offices of the city with the permission of the Secretary of Health. Yes, it is like that. It's wonderful. Brothers, when we go out to do the work, the Lord opens the door. The people are waiting for our presence, our visitation. Brother, to conclude the topic of canvassing, in this last General Conference Council meeting, we made the decision that 
beginning next year, every three or two months, one of the departments will present a little of its work at the world level in regards to canvassing. We will have a presentation in the month of March. Tell us about this. Exactly, Brother Andre. The month of March, the month of March has been set aside, has been consecrated as the month of worldwide canvassing. And we are already making the recordings, the PowerPoints to send to all of you, to all the churches, conferences, unions, in your language, that you can you can reproduce it. You can preach it, teach it, or if we still don't have the opportunity to meet in our churches, you will be able to see in the programs close to you. We have chosen within the month of March a weekend exclusively to talk about canvassing. And we have selected uh, the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st of, 21st of March, when on Friday evening, we have the title for the message, Silence Messengers. On Saturday morning, the theme, Messengers of Health. In the afternoon, Experiences on the Canvassing. And on Sunday morning, well, Densian Canvassing. And on Sunday evening, uh, Messengers of Hope. So don't forget... The month of worldwide canvassing will be the month of March. Okay, thanks, thanks, Brother Mario, for your explanation. Thank you for bringing these very important plans about missionary work and canvassing. God bless you, bless your work, bless your family, and I give you the opportunity to have a few words for the conclusion. Brother Andre, also thank you very much for your support, uh, supporting us in this work. I know that you carry the youth and you carry the teenagers, the children, the elderly, and that, and that we have had an opportunity to receive good instruction through the work that you have developed here and in other places. I thank you for accompanying and supporting us. I also thank all the churches for receiving this information. We know that there is nothing new in all of this. They are plans that are already stipulated within the spirit of prophecy and in the Word of God. And we would like to join in the efforts that you have already been making so that in some way we can collaborate in advancing and advancing in the work, in the work of the Lord, so that we can conclude this work and have the joy of being all together with our Savior Jesus when He comes in the clouds of heaven. May the Lord bless my brothers and multiply their efforts in the work of the Lord. Big hugs and may the Lord bless us. Amen. May the Lord be with us. Amen. Bless each and every one of us. See you soon. Hi, my name is Jennifer, and I'm here to invite you to the Georgia Canvassing Project of 2021. This project is centered around helping people find hope by bringing truth to their doorstep. Our mission is to reach the communities in Georgia and to pursue a deep relationship with Jesus together. When I think about how canvassing has impacted my life, I immediately think about the very first time I went canvassing. I had never done it before, and it was quite an experience. I learned so much. From that experience, a desire was created in my heart to share Christ with others. To be honest, before the first time I went canvassing, I didn't really care to share Christ with others. However, after this experience, I had a desire like never before to share the good news of salvation with our sin-sick world. So if you're unsure about coming to this project or feel scared, don't be. It's worth all the time and money in the world. You won't regret coming. I can promise you that. The Georgia Project will be taking place on June 6th through the 27th, and we are inviting you to attend. However, due to COVID safety regulations, we have limited number of people who can come. So make sure to fill out your application today. God bless, and I hope to see you in Georgia.
Thank you, Pastor Linares and Pastor Devai, for the presentation of these plans. And I really hope, by God's grace, that your ministry will continue to be blessed by God. I know we are all motivated now to go out and preach the gospel, make efforts for the salvation of many souls. But my appeal to each and every one of us is not to forget that in our efforts, we need the presence of God with us all the time. We need God to abide with us. Towards the conclusion of this program, I would like you to join your thoughts together with the voices of the quartet before the throne as they sing the song, Abide With Us. Abide with me fast all the We thank the Before the Throne Quartet for this wonderful song as well. And we pray again that the Lord may bless their efforts. And now I would like you to bow your souls again in prayer as we conclude this program. Our Father, we chart in heaven in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you for the opportunity we had to be present in this program. We thank you for the plans that have been made and presented. And we pray for a special blessing for Brother Linares in his efforts to reach out to those in need of salvation. And we also pray for our brethren around the world that we may all be cooperative with you in this work. And we pray for the young people that you may enable them to participate together with us and uh, as we go about our work, help us not to forget that we need you to lead us. We need you to abide with us. We also pray for other plans that have been made for, by other departments. And through your grace, help all of us to be able to work unitedly. And through your grace, 
Hasten your soon coming. In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you. Amen. I am really glad that you joined us for this special program. And I want you to remember that the General Conference will continue bringing such special programs to us, each and every department will, in the next couple of years. And the next program will be prepared by the Saba School Department of the General Conference in the month of May. Please, prepare your souls for that program and may the Lord bless you as you go out and reach out to those who need salvation. The Lord bless you is my prayer.